This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. So we are now going to concentrate on the motion of rigid bodies rather than on the motion of general system of particles. Okay. So in this part we are going to study about equilibrium of a rigid body. We shall recapitulate what effect the external forces have on a rigid body. Okay. The forces change the translational state of the motion of the rigid body. Which means that uh, they change its total linear momentum in accordance. Isn't it? In accordance with the equation that we studied. That is dp by dt is equal to f external. Isn't it? Yes. But this is not the only effect the forces have. The total torque on the body may not vanish. Such a torque changes the rotational state state of motion of the rigid body which means it changes the total angular momentum of the body in accordance with the equation that is uh, dl by dt is equal to torque external it changes the rotational moment of the body because the total effect of the torque on the body will not vanish Okay, a rigid body is said to be in mechanical equilibrium if both its linear momentum as well as angular momentum are not changing with time. Or equivalently, the body has neither linear acceleration nor ag angular acceleration. Which means the total force, that is the vector sum of forces on the rigid body is zero. The angular momentum, linear momentum, constant means it should follow these things. It should for you know it should obey these rules. Means the total force acting on this system must be zero. The vector sum of these uh, forces. Okay. If the total force on the body is zero, then the total linear momentum of the body does not change with the time. So, this gives the condition for translational equilibrium of the body. This equation, it gives the condition for translational equilibrium of the body. Okay. And if you consider the second case, that is the total torque. The vector sum of the torque on the rigid body must be 0. We can write it as uh, like this. Sigma i is equal to 1 to n. Okay. The total torque, the vector sum of the torques on the rigid body is 0. If the total torque on the rigid body is 0 means the total angular momentum of the body does not change with the time. So, this gives the condition for the rotational equilibrium of the body. Okay. So, we may get a doubt that whether this rotational equilibrium condition remains valid if the origin with respect to which the torques are taken shifted. If the, initially if the uh, torque is acting from this point and in the next case if the torque is changed to some other point, then will it be, will it satisfy that rotational equilibrium condition? Yes. If the translational equilibrium condition holds for a rigid body, then such a shift of origin does not matter. Then the rotational equilibrium also you know, holds good. It, it will not change. 
uh, or in, you can say it is independent of the location of the origin about which the talks are taken okay so the equations that we studied now the first equation and the second this equation are vector equations they are equivalent to three scalar equations so we can write them as sigma i is equal to 1 to n fx is equal to 0 sigma i is equal to 1 to n fi is equal to 0 sigma i is equal to 1 to n fz is equal to 0 and similarly for the second case sigma i is equal to 1 to 1 to n torque i is equal to 0 sigma i is equal to 1 to n torque so here it is uh, f i x f y y and f i z here also it is torque i x torque i y and sigma i is equal to 1 to n torque i z is equal to 0 where this torque uh, i x i y i z are respectively x y z components of the torque and f i x f i y f i z are the x y z components of the forces okay let us consider these as uh, equations uh, 1 and this will be equation 2 so these two equations give six independent conditions to be satisfied for mechanical equilibrium of a rigid body okay in a number of problems all the forces acting on a body are coplanar then we need only three conditions to be satisfied for mechanical equilibrium if they are lying in the same plane then we don't need one more extra component we need to you know only four equations are enough in that particular case so two of these conditions correspond to the translational equilibrium the sum of the components of the forces along any two perpendicular axis in the plane must be zero. If you consider translational motion, then only two of the equations are enough. So, any two perpendicular axis, the force on any two perpendicular axis, the sum must be equal to zero. And the third condition corresponds to the rotational equilibrium. The sum of the components of the torques along any axis perpendicular to the plane of the forces must be zero. Okay, the conditions of equilibrium of a rigid body may be compared with those for a particle which we considered earlier. Okay, since consideration of rotational motion does not apply to a particle, only the conditions for translational equilibrium can be applied to a particle we can't apply this rotational equilibrium conditions for a particle because particles we consider only translational motion isn't it so we can apply the translational motion conditions okay for a equilibrium of a particle the vector sum of all the forces on it must be zero for if we consider equilibrium of a particle since all these forces act on a single particle they must be concurrent so, equilibrium under concurrent forces we discussed in previous chapters, isn't it? Yes. See, a body may be in partial equilibrium, that is, it may be in translational equilibrium or a not in rotational equilibrium or it may be in rotational equilibrium but not in translational equilibrium. It, it is that case also possible. So, you just consider here a light rod AB in this figure. A light rod AB at two ends A and B of which two parallel forces both equal in magnitude are applied perpendicular to the force. See the force, two forces are applied at each ends. Let C be the midpoint of AB and CA is equal to CB that is given by A. Okay.
CA is equal to CB. That is equal to A. Okay. The moment of force at A and B will both be equal in magnitude. Moment of force is given by A into F, isn't it? Both are equal in magnitude in these two cases. But opposite in sense as shown here. But opposite in sense. Magnitude is equal but opposite in sense. The system will be in rotational equilibrium. But it will not be in translational equilibrium, isn't it? The force at B, in this first case, okay, the force at B is reversed in this second case, isn't it? Thus, we have same rod with two equal and opposite forces applied perpendicular to the rod, one at end A and one at end B. So, hence, here the moments of both forces are equal. They have again same magnitude A into F. But, they act in the same sense and cause anti-clockwise rotation of the rod. The total force on the body is a zero. So, the total body is in translational equilibrium. But, it is not in rotational equilibrium. Because, the total torque acting on the body is not zero. Okay. In the first case, that was in that was uh, not in translational equilibrium, but it was in rotational equilibrium because the total torque acting on the body in that case was zero. A pair of equal and opposite forces with the different lines of action is known as couple or torque. Okay, in the second case, a pair. These two forces are a pair, right? Isn't it? They are of equal and they are acting oppositely so a pair of equal and opposite forces with the different lines of action so they are acting in a different lines here it is acting like this and here it is acting like this different lines of action is known as couple a couple produces rotation without translation okay See, when we open the lid of a bottle by turning it, our fingers are applying a couple to the lid. Okay. Another known example is a compass needle in the earth's magnetic field. You can see here. Okay. As shown in this figure, the earth's magnetic field exerts equal forces on the north and south poles. Equal and opposite forces on the north and south poles. The force on the north pole is towards the north and the force on the south pole is towards the south. So, except when needle points in north-south direction, the two forces do not have the same line of action. Thus, there is a couple acting on the needle due to the earth's magnetic field. Okay. Now, let us consider one simple problem here. Show that moment of a couple does not depend on the point about which you take the moments. Okay. Consider a couple as you shown in figure A and B. Two forces are acting. The forces are equal and opposite on a rigid body. These points have position vectors R1 and R2 when we consider origin O. So, let us take the moments of the forces about the origin. The moment of the couple is nothing but sum of the moments of the two forces making the couple. Moment of the couple is equal to Sum of the moments of the couple, sum of the moments of the two forces which makes the couple. Okay, that is given by first case R1 minus F1 plus 
R2 only F1, isn't it? So F1 or here we have taken it as F, we can write it as F only. Okay, so we can write it as uh, R2 minus R1 into F. But R1 plus AB is equal to R2, isn't it? And hence AB is equal to what? R2 minus R1. Therefore, the moment of couple, we can write it as AB cross F. So, this is independent of the origin and the point about which we took the moments of the forces.